back to University Speaks, the show by students for students. I'm Maria Dibut. And I'm Lena Atu. I'm filling in for Anthony Ramos. But for today's show, we're going to spotlight students and alumni who have shown just how different, daring, and diverse UNLV is. We are even going to have in-studio interview with editors from the Scarlet and Gray newspapers who have helped share the stories on our diverse campus. UNLV has been known for its diversity and has recently been acknowledged as part of the top five most diverse campuses on the nation. This includes the overall mix of Black, Latinx, Native American, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Native Hawaiian, White, and multiracial students. The university also has 25% Latinx enrollment meeting, the requirements of the U.S. Department of Education as a Hispanic-serving institution. Next, we want to acknowledge some of UNLV's notable alumni, starting with Guy Fieri, the owner of Flavortown Kitchen. He is no stranger to helping out the UNLV community by making donations to the School of Hospitality as a way of giving back to the school that helped him achieve his goals. Another notable alumni is talk show host Jimmy Kimmel. He is well known for his show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, but was also honored as one of UNLV's honorary doctorate figures in 2013. COVID-19 booster shots are here, and in effort to increase the vaccine's popularity, health officials have authorized the mixing and matching of booster doses. Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna have all been FDA approved, meaning more fully vaccinated people can receive their booster shot to protect themselves from other strains of the virus. UNLV is administering the Pfizer booster shot for those who meet eligibility requirements. You must bring your vaccination card or other record of your previous vaccinations in order to receive your booster shot at the Student Wellness Center. We've been talking about our diverse campus a lot, but what is it like walking through of UNLV students' life here on campus? Our reporter Mia Nakamura has more. We are all familiar with the word accessible, but do we really know its true definition? For students like Jason Amelio, accessibility is crucial for his college experience. Let's go take a look. Jason Amelio was diagnosed with a rare form of blindness called sep-optic dysplasia since he was three months old. Since then, he has had to face challenges, misconceptions, and unaccessibility. No matter where I've, I've gone to school, no matter how many times I've had the same professor or the same teacher in high school, a lot of times accommodations aren't met. Out of the hundreds of tables at the Lead Library, there are only two that are accessible for Jason. I require talking software and magnification, and they put it in just a small little corner of the library. Besides the library, there are even difficulties when it comes to the classroom. Not everything's accommodated, and by that I mean there might be um, a class where a professor says, well, we're just going to look at pictures, and you're going to have to tell me this about them, or they might have readings that might not be available for me because they didn't get them to me on time. Unlike the commercial ATMs at UNLV, the Rubble cash machine is not accessible to Jason. There's really not a lot, no braille signs, there's no tactile markers in places, there's, so there's so much we can accommodate. Besides having UNLV more accessible to students like Jason, he wishes for one more thing. Just take us on, don't assume anything, and just get to know us. Reporting for University Speaks, this is Mia Nakamura. If you want to advocate for your accommodations on campus, register to the Disability Resource Center at unlv.edu slash drc. Back to you, Lena. Sometimes people need to be reminded of how different someone's life is in comparison to others like Jason. In months like November, it can give people the chance to give back and recognize other parts that aren't celebrated by everyone year round. November is National American Indian Heritage Month. This month is a time to celebrate rich and diverse cultures, traditions, and histories, and to acknowledge the important contributions of Native people. Here at UNLV, the Native American Program Coordinator serves the UNLV community of Native American Indigenous students. Key programs offered to the UNLV students include the Native American Welcome Event, Native American Heritage Month Main Event, Indigenous Socials, and the hashtag Native Voice Matters series. For more information about these events, visit unlv.edu slash Native American. Class registration opened in November 1st. Remember, you must be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 to sign up for in-person classes here at UNLV. Check my UNLV for your enrollment date and time. Any holds that are stopping you from enrolling in your classes and additional class details. If you need any further help, there are registration help sessions that are offered before and during priority registration, as well as meetings you can schedule with your academic advisor. 
Also, FAFSA is currently available for students who need financial aid. UNLV is celebrating Leeds Library's 20th anniversary. It is one of the most important buildings here on campus that helps students throughout their college career. I spoke with Maggie Farrell, the Dean of Universities, for more. Lee Library is the heart of UNLV and it's now celebrating its 20th anniversary. Dean of Libraries, Maggie Farrell, has an extensive experience with academic libraries and has been Dean at LEAD since 2017. She talks about how important it is to be celebrating the library's 20th anniversary. We are celebrating because it is the key building for all students at UNLV. Here in LEAD Library, you can study, you can find information, you can tap expertise. And so celebrating this significant building is of great importance to the UNLV community. The university libraries provide students with everything they need in order to succeed academically. But without the students, LEAD Library wouldn't be what it is. Students come and interact in their energy and their enthusiasm for learning and cheering. So it's a beautiful, beautiful building, but what makes this building so special are all of our students who come and use LEAD Library every day. Another important part of the UNLV community is the Scarlet and Gray newspaper. I'm here today with Alex Wright, Editor-in-Chief, and Vanessa Booth, Managing Editor. It's so great to have you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Thanks for welcoming us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. So tell me about the Scarlet and Gray and your involvement with it. Uh, so we're the student newspaper on campus. We've been uh, producing newspapers since 1957, uh, a lot like University Speaks. We're for the students, by the students, we serve as the voice for the UNLV community to keep them updated on what's happening on campus and spotlight amazing things that are happening on campus. Great. So how are your roles important to this paper? Um, so specifically with my role, I serve as the managing editor currently, and I'm basically Alex's right-hand man. I manage it, I manage all of the specific editors in the newspaper. I'm their um, first-hand representative when it comes to serving on the UNLV Scar Scarlet and Gray Free Press Advisory Board. Um, and also, whenever we have conflicts with the public necessarily, I can give a statement representing the editors as well as representing the editor-in-chief. And as editor-in-chief, I deal with a lot of the business side of it, the finances. Uh, we work with the Review Journal, who is grac grateful enough to give us a donation to help pay for some of our uh, uh, staff and all that and they also print our newspaper for free so a lot of the business side of it I help uh, kind of create work with the editors work with Vanessa to help kind of create the standards of the newspaper and Vanessa really you know she uh, helps enforce that. Where can students get the newspaper on campus? Uh, we have over 40 news racks around campus there's a lot in the student union there's one here in Greenspawn almost every building has one uh, we're working on kind of evaluating those spots and see where pickup is really good for the newspaper so students can get it all over uh, the newspaper all over on campus and they can also go to our website unlvscarletandgray.com where we post all of our stories and where we're also posting our e-edition our pdf file of our newspaper perfect i know the scarlet and gray tends to highlight students on campus tell me how that's unique to the unlv uh, well it's real really important because we're UNLV students too, and we want to highlight the amazing things they're doing. There's so many great things happening on campus that uh, bigger publications might not uh, post or report on. So that's kind of our job to dig, reach out to uh, co communications people here and the different departments and just try to understand what's happening. And of course, we do get a lot of emails about certain events, and we're always looking forward to finding specific events, specific students, and their achievements to highlight. Perfect. And for those who want to get involved, how do they do that? And do you have any advice for anyone who's wanting to get involved with the Scarlet and Gray? Um, to, so to speak to involvement, definitely the best way to get involved is either emailing me, um, the managing editor at managing.freepress at unlv.edu, or emailing Alex um, at chief.freepress at unlv.edu. Um, also, you can reach out to any members of our staff, any of our 
uh, paid staff as well. Um, we're located on the third floor of the student union. You can always stop by. Usually we're there between the hours of like eight to I would say five, but sometimes we're there a little bit longer working on the paper. Um, and yeah, it's a very easy process. We kind of run students through. We kind of guide them in how we write our stories. We have our pitch meetings every Saturday. Um, stories are due every Friday and um, editors work on them throughout the weekend. Um, on Sunday, we finalize our entire version of the paper and then they hit the stands Monday morning um, and we go around uh, campus and kind of cover it a little mm -hmm. bit and let the students know that it's ready for pickup. And to answer the second part of your question, it's a really a great way for students to get involved, get their get experience writing for a newspaper, get journalism experience. Uh, if they want to build their portfolio, have news clippings to say, hi, hey, I published for a newspaper. Uh, I had a class last year where we had a lot of journalism professionals and all of them, they work in so many different aspects, said they got their start at, at a student newspaper. So learning, get, having that skill to write, uh, as Vanessa said, you know, we have a lot of great editors and pretty easy to work with. So uh, it's just a great uh, first step to get published and to get, uh, get a byline and get some news clippings. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Another important part of UNLV is the UNLV Community Garden. It is a place on campus to connect with others while helping the environment. I visited the garden during one of their volunteer days and spoke to a volunteer about the importance of the garden. The UNLV Campus Community Garden is a place on campus to help create a sense of community, learning, and sustainability among students, faculty, and staff by producing organic natural harvests. I only really learned about it recently and I am now coming to volunteer because I see that it's a place where anyone can come and volunteer and it brings people together regardless of what their major is or what their background is. The community garden is located right next to the Rebel Recycling Center. The entrance is by the Stan Fulton Building parking lot. It features 41 raised beds, 100% organic soil, program and curriculum opportunities, and composting. Uh, our community garden specifically helps the UNLV food pantry as the uh, kind of the produce that we've planted today. Um, we've planted like cauliflower, lettuce, cabbage. <laughs> that all gets sent to the UNLV food pantry where people can come and take what they need. If you have a group of at least four members with the registered student organization, faculty or staff department or class, you can get your own bed together. If you are an individual looking to participate, it is advised to join the Rebel Roots Garden Club. For more information about the community garden, visit UNLV Garden on Instagram. For more information, visit rebelroots.org and stay tuned for future volunteer days. The Vegas Golden Knights are once again launching their Taco Bell student rush ticket option for local college students during their 2021-2022 season. Student rush gives students the ability to purchase Golden Knights tickets at a discounted price. Students can sign up at nhl.com forward slash Golden Knights. The form will ask you for your name, phone number, school, and EDU email. Students must use their UNLV.edu email to be able to participate in the program. The Golden Knights will send an email when tickets are available. And go Knights go! One of our UNLV alumni has taken sports to the next level with the experience he learned about here about photography. Our reporter Sydney Lum has more. Many college students strive to make their passion their career. I met up with photographer Lucas Peltier, who just did that. Peltier just graduated this past May and didn't always imagine his career as a photographer, especially since he graduated as a print journalism student. I took a class in photojournalism. I was not looking into getting into photography at all. I had no experience prior before that. And I, once I took that class, I just fell in love with it. From that point on, Peltier photographed events at UNLV and eventually moved on to photographing professional sports teams such as Vegas Golden Knights and the Chicago Bears. It's been real surreal. I never imagined being able to reach that level. I've been only been doing this for three years now, so being able to work with the Bears on the sidelines with their photographer is a great learning experience for me, and I just can't wait to see what comes next. With his photography career just beginning to take off, he received an offer like no other for a newly college graduate. I got an offer from USA Today. I uh, was able to build relationships during my time here with the athletic department and one of the staff referred me to them. 
So I received an offer from them yesterday and I'm just looking forward to being able to work with them for the Knights and all your sports teams here in town. Photography has given Peltier the chance to make strong connections with UNLV athletes. Being able to work with them for so long, I've grown to like know many of the players and build relationships with them. So they're pretty much like family to me when I go to your events and photograph them. I'm Sydney Lum reporting for University Speaks. Sharing photos and experiences is all part of the holiday season, and it's also about appreciating all that you have. Let's take a look at what UNLV students are thankful for this holiday season. I'm just thankful for being alive. I'm thankful for having great friends, great family, and a great support system around me. I am so grateful for the outstanding faculty, staff, and students in the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs. Uh, I'm thankful for my friends and family, and just all the new friends that I made this year during first year back on campus. I think I'm thankful for the fact that I was given the opportunity to come down here and go to school at UNLV. For the Jamba Juice that my friend Natalie bought me. I'm thankful that I was able to find friends in college because it's, uh, it's a very hard place. I am thankful for having my boyfriend. I'm just thankful to be alive, man. I was, I was deployed a few times. Uh, being able to be at this great university and uh, working with uh, great students and thankful for really nice weather today. Maria, what are you thankful for this year? I am grateful for my family, my friends, my beautiful UNLV TV family. What are you thankful for? <laughs> I'm also thankful for my family and friends, especially my sorority, Epsilon Alpha Sigma. They've given me a group of my best friends. Wait, isn't that the multicultural one here yeah. on campus? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's the first and only Arab sorority in the in campus and in the nation. That's amazing. Mm. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our reporter, Maya Goodwin, has more season has passed, but if you're interested in a cultural-based sorority, listen to this. So Epsilon Alpha Sigma, um, or EAS, is part of the Multicultural Greek Council here at UNLV. So we are a culturally-based sorority. Uh, we like to call ourselves Arab interest because you don't have to be Arab or Middle Eastern whatsoever in order to join. Epsilon Alpha Sigma constantly makes it a priority to raise money and give back to their culture sell raffle tickets and we get donations from sponsors and businesses that support us for items or coupons vouchers like to raffle off and all of the money that we raise from raffle tickets goes to Friends of Kayani which is a nonprofit organization that provides supplies um, transportation and medical aid to Syrian refugee children yeah so they send all the money to Lebanon um, for these children. They help build schools for them, buy books, libraries, and just make sure that they have everything that they need. For more information on how to get involved, check out at EASUNLV on Instagram for more information. This has been Maya Goodwin with University Speaks. We have so many diverse students on campus. It's great to see them all get involved. It also helps our university understand what more we can do to keep people included in the conversation. Now we're going to toss it over to Mia with all things entertainment. Day in Vegas is a three-day festival from November 12th to the 14th, focusing on hip-hop artists like Kendrick Lamar, Travis Scott, and Tyler the Creator. The previous Day in Vegas events featured a simple layout at the Las Vegas Festival grounds with only three stages and a short walk apart, which opened up the venue to the 60,000 attendees. Speaking about music, the 15-time Grammy winner Adele announces her new album, which will be titled 30, and will be our first album in six years. Adele came out with a statement stating that the album has come out in the most turbulent period of her life. And when asked about the album, she said, quote, divorce babe, end quote. West Side Story is about teenagers Tony and Maria who fall in love in New York City despite having affiliations with rival street gangs. This movie comes as Steven Spielberg's music debut with actors including Ansel Elgort and Maddie Ziegler. The film is second feature length adaption to the 1957 Broadway musical of the same name by author Lorenz. And that's all I have. Back to you guys at the desk. I love seeing all parts of our campus in today's shows. Who knows? Maybe we'll keep spotlighting different students and staff. I agree. There's definitely not a dull moment here at UNLV. Well, that's today's show. Thanks for tuning in to University Speaks. I'm Lena Atu. And I'm Maria Dibut. See you next time.